Okay, welcome to APBS. It is uh, Monday evening, and this is my living room, and well, dining room, I guess. And tonight we're going to talk about electron configuration. But um, I'm going to take a different approach than we did in class today because, like I said, I think some people got into class, some people didn't. So let's try a different spin and see if we can help out the people that were having trouble today. If you recall from your notes, um, over on the left hand side here, we had, um, I introduced the, the four quantum numbers. I, the first quantum number is the energy level, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the second quantum number shows the shape of the orbitals. There's S's, P's, D's, and F's. The third shows the number of orbitals in it or the, the orientation, and that's not given here. And then the fourth shows the, the electron spin, which is one way or the other, because there's room for two electrons in each orbital. Okay? So you set this up, and the lowest energy level, there's room for one orbital. That's the 1s. And then it goes up to the second energy level, and there's room for 2s and 2p. And then 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. And then it just keeps going. It, there's not any more after the f's. It just keeps going up from there. So there's f's up here. And I showed you this with the arrows. And like I said, I'm going to do something different tonight. But here are the arrows that I showed you in class. So the 1s gets filled first. And then you go up to the next arrow, and the 2s gets filled. And then the next arrow, 2p... 3s, just follow my cursor. And then the next one, 3p and 4s. 3d, 4p, 5s. 4d, 5p, 6s. 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s. And, and you get it, okay? And that's what we did today, and some people got it, but I want to offer a new strategy. So at the end of class, we, we had a look at this periodic table. And the periodic table, if you recall, we broke it down. We said, well, in the first row, this is like the first energy level, and so there's 1s1, 1s2. And then there's a definite pattern that grows. You'll see here 2s, 3s, 4, 5, 6, 7s. The s's are all in the first two columns. Over here on the right-hand side, remember there's there's three p orbitals, okay, and each orbital holds two, so there's room for six electrons. Well, here's the two p with its six electrons, the three p three orbitals six electrons, the four p three orbitals six electrons, five p three orbitals six electrons, and you get it. In the middle here, there are ten spots, okay, and that's where the d's go because the d's have five orbitals. And each orbital holds two, so there's room for ten electrons. And here's where our ten electrons fit in. And then, if you recall, we looked at this in class today. There's a little jump or a gap right here and right here. It goes from like 57 up to 72. And that's where these Fs fit in. The 4F fits right in here. It doesn't. There's not really a spot for it, but that's where it goes. And the 5F fits in here. You won't get a lot of electron configura configuration problems with Fs, but you, you got to be able to know how to do it. Okay, so tonight what I want to do is I want to look at arsenic. Okay, arsenic has 33 electrons, and we're going to use a different strategy than we did in class. If you like the strategy we did in class, keep doing it. All right, if it works for you, use it. Okay? If it's not broken, don't fix it. But for those of you that were having trouble today in class, I want to propose a different strategy. Here's arsenic right here, okay? And arsenic is in the middle of the 4p orbitals, right? 2p, 3p, 4p. In fact, it's one, two, three spots into the 4p orbital. So that means that the last thing we write on our electron configuration should be 4p3. Let's do it. Let's check it out and see if it works. Okay, so we start out first one. Here is the 1s, and 1s can hold two electrons, so this is going to be, I'm going to wow you with my trackpad handwriting. This will inspire you guys to buy me an iPad. 1s has room for two electrons, okay? So 1s2, there you go. So 33 electrons need a home. We have homes for two of them. 31 to go. 
let's keep going. After the 1s is the 2s. And 2s also has room for 1, 2 electrons. So let's check it out. We'll take an s, another s orbital, we'll put it in here. There's 2. Oh, that is some great 2 handwriting. Look at that. 2s. And there's room for 2 electrons there. 1 goes up. The other goes down. Just like Pauli exclusion principle tells us. All right. So we now have home for four electrons, 29 to go. What's after the 2s? Okay, 2p. Now remember the p orbitals comes in group, they come in groups of three, and so they can hold six electrons. So let's do it. Let's grab ourselves a p orbital. We'll drag it down here. There we go. And this is going to be 2p. And if you forget that it's 2p, Go back, look at the periodic table. First energy level, second energy level, 2s, 2p. All right? 2p holds six electrons. So just like Hun's rule, remember I talked about going to that hotel, and the guy said, oh, do you want to share a room with somebody else, or do you want your own room for the same price? I want to take my own room. And the electrons say the same thing. Do you want to share an energy level with somebody else? And then the other electrons say, okay, well, if there's no rooms available, we'll pair up four, five, six. There's two, P, six. All right, so how's our tally doing? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're up to ten. If you lose count with the tally, just check over here. See, here's neon with an atomic number of ten. And it's at the end of the 2p orbital. We're at the end of the 2p orbital, and we've placed 10 electrons. That's not a coincidence. All right. What's after 2p? Here we go. 2p finishes up, and we go to the 3s. Grab an s orbital. Put it there. Get my grade 2 crayon. Here I go. 3s. And there is room for 2 there. 1 going up, 1 going down. Now we have 12 electrons, have a home, 21 to go. What's after the 3s? 3s, it skips across to 3p, three orbitals with six, or with room for six electrons. Here we go, 3p, oh, I don't want that, I want this. There we go, 3p, and there's room for six electrons. There we go, 3p. All right, the same thing, Hun's rule, remember, one, two, three of them take their own room, and then, oh, shoot, we got to share a room, four, five, six. Remember on a test, don't call them rooms, call them orbitals. It sounds much smarter. Here we go, one, two, three, speaking of sounding smart, four, five, six, there we go, we have 18 electrons, have a home, and 15 left to go. After the 3p, we have the 4s. Room for two electrons on that 4s. So let's do it. Let's grab an s orbital. There's one waiting for us. Maybe. You gonna move? There we go. Right here. 4s. There's room for two electrons. Put it in. 4s. And one. Two. Oh, two electrons. Add them to the tower. Two, and we have 20 electrons have a home, which is good, because when we look at this, there's calcium, 20 protons. That's a good sign. All right. Next up, the big daddy, 3D, has five orbitals and can hold 10 electrons. How many electrons do we have left? Well, we've found homes for 20. We have 13 left to go. So that D orbital is going to be filled. Come on down. 3D. There we go. 3D orbitals. Whoa, that is ugly. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then doubling up because I'm out of single room. Six, seven, We 
found home for 30 electrons. We only have three more to go. All right, we just filled the 3D, and now we're into the 4P, and that rings a bell because when we started this problem, we said, look, we should finish with 4P3, and look at this, 1, 2, 3, 4P3. So, grab ourselves a P orbital. There you go. And we're going to call this one 4P. And this, there's room for six electrons in the 4P orbital, but we don't need room for six electrons because there's only three left. One, two, three. And we are done. Congratulations, you have just done a electron configuration. Good job, team. Hope everybody's doing okay, and um, we'll see you next period. Take care of yourself. Have a good night.